All right, welcome back to our discussion of graphing demand and supply and calculating consumer surplus and producer surplus and all these various things. And I'm picking up here with the same equation and graph that we had in part B of our discussion, where the equations are 12 minus 2 thirds Q for demand and 2 plus Q for supply. And so I encourage you, if you're following along, go ahead and get a piece of paper and mark off some axes if you don't have graph paper or go to printfreegraphpaper.com and start your demand curve at a y-intercept of 12 and go down to an intersect an x-intercept of 18 and start your supply curve at a y-intercept of 2 and go up at a slope of 1 and where the uh, equilibrium is a price of $8 and the quantity is six. So pause that and do that now if you haven't already done so. And also write down these numbers that the total revenue is 48, consumer surplus 12, total benefit 60, variable cost 30, producer surplus is $18, and the total surplus is 30. Because in this video we're going to need those numbers to see what changes when the government gets involved and we're going to start by looking at a production quota. Now a production quota is when the government passes a law and says that businesses are not allowed to produce as many as are being produced in equilibrium, uh, which in this case is six, the government wants to reduce production for some reason. Now many times this will be to reduce pollution. For example, they might cap the number of coal burning power plants or cap the amount of steel that is being made below six tons to maybe only three or four tons. And so I'm going to load a blank version of this uh, so that it doesn't get so ugly, but we need to have these numbers in mind here, 48, 12, 60, 30, 18, and 30, so that we can compare later. Okay, so here's a blank uh, supply and demand graph to start with and suppose the government put in a production quota at two units so we're not allowed to produce six anymore so we're not going to be able to get to the same point as we would in equilibrium there's going to be this quota of two units and so let me draw in the production quota at Q equals two so when the government does this everything to the right of two units now becomes impossible to do. So everything that happens, we're going to be stuck over here to the left-hand side uh, of our supply and our demand graph. Now, the first question you need to be able to answer when the government puts in this quota of two units, what is going to happen to the equilibrium quantity that's going to be exchanged in the market. Well, of course, that's going to go from six down to two. So the equilibrium, well, it's the out of equilibrium quantity. But now the quantity is going to be stuck at two. So let's write that down so that we remember that. The next important question to ask is, what is going to happen to the price in this situation when you have a quota of two? Now, Many times people will look at two obvious potential points uh, that, that might have something to do with what's going on here uh, at a quota of two. One is uh, looking at the point here on the demand curve, look at that price, and some people will look at this price here on the supply curve. And so Again, due to uh, the vagaries of not being able to draw straight lines, uh, and you also just, you have to have the ability to double check these things yourself. Let's figure out what these two prices are and discuss which of these two might be the price that would be charged with a, a quota of two. Now, in order to do this, in order to find out what P equals, at a quantity of two on the demand curve, you just simply put in Q equals two into the demand function. That's why the demand function exists. 
So put in Q for 2 and you get price equals 12 minus 2 thirds times 2. So that's going to be price equals 12 minus 4 thirds. And so if you put that in your calculator, 12 minus uh, 4 thirds, that's 1 and a third. You get a price of 10.66666. And I'm going to round that off to $10.66. So on the demand curve, this price is ten dollars and sixty six 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 six, or we'll we'll round it off to ten sixty seven. So ten dollars and sixty seven cents. That might be the price. Now let's look at this other point down below. What is the price on the supply curve? Now the way I've drawn it, it looks like it could be four dollars and fifty cents. But let's verify it because there's a function that tells us price equals 2 plus Q on the uh, supply curve. Well, that's easy. P equals 2 plus 2. It tells us that that price is really 4. And so I'm going to use something that teachers call the big point theorem. If we make that point big enough, it'll, it'll hit the number we want, which is $4 there. So we've got two prices that are possible here, uh, candidates. $4 on the supply curve when the quantity equals 2 or 1067 on the demand curve. And the price that most people think would make sense, and I agree with this, is that if I'm a producer and I am only allowed to sell two units, what I am going to do with those two units is look up at the demand curve and try to find the highest price where people will buy a quantity of two. And that's the price that's given right here at ten dollars and sixty seven cents and so that is going to be what the price would be in this case so p equals ten dollars and sixty seven cents now let's continue with the same kinds of things we did um, in the earlier lectures if the price is ten sixty seven we can draw our total revenue box here total revenue is two times ten sixty seven and so 2 times 1067, keep in mind we're going to have a little bit of rounding error when we do this, but 2 times 1067 gives us a total revenue of $21.34. So total revenue, 21.34. Now the next thing I usually like to calculate is the consumer surplus, which is this triangle up top. And this triangle goes from 12 down to 1067, from 12 over to 2 units, and so it's this little yellow triangle on top is our consumer surplus because it's always below the demand curve and above the price that people are paying. So consumer surplus equals 1 half times the base is 2, 1 half times 2, well that's just 1, times the height of the triangle is from 12 down to 1067. That's $1.33. So we have 1 half times 2 times $1.33. The consumer surplus is simply $1.33 now. Now, what about the total revenue? Well, we break that total revenue into two parts. The top part is going to be producer surplus. The bottom part is going to be variable costs. Now both of these shapes are not triangles and not rectangles, so we're going to have to break them into two parts in order to see uh, what they are. And I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to calculate the variable costs here um, because I can easily see what that rectangle looks like and what that triangle looks like on top. Those look like they'd be easy to calculate. And so the uh, variable costs. This rectangle is simply 2 times 2 is 4. And then the uh, triangular part is 1 half times 2 times 2. 1 half times 2 times 2 is 2. And so now we know that the variable costs are 4 for the square, 2 plus, uh, plus 2 for the triangle equals 6. And then we can easily if you keep in mind that the total revenue is the entire blue rectangle there and all we're doing is breaking it into two parts. Part of, part of it is variable costs 
and the rest is producer surplus, just ask yourself, okay, if $6 of that total revenue goes to variable costs, how much is going to be left over for the uh, producer surplus? It's just 21.34 minus 6 and you get $15.34. So $15.34. Now real quickly to wrap up here, um, that's the producer surplus. What is the total surplus? It's the consumer surplus of $1.33 plus the producer surplus of $15.34 and that's $16.67. That's our total surplus. And we'll come back for a second part to analyze this further.